Welcome, everybody, to a beautiful day here in Dallas, Texas. Second round action in the Midwest region about to come your way. The Iowa State Cyclones set to take on the Utes of Utah. A little bit later on, it'll be the Wildcats of Kentucky as they take on Virginia Tech. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Gorman, along with the coach, George Raveling. Keith Van Horn is here, and he's going to start. What adjustments does he need to make, Coach? Mike, he's got to make two, a physical adjustment and a mental adjustment. The mental adjustment will take care of itself. He's going to come out fired up. What he's got to do is fight through fatigue, number one, and regain his timing, Mike. All right, the Cyclones are a team that can wear you out. Tim Floyd's done a great job with them. Well, putting the pieces together, Mike, was one thing, but putting them together so quickly was absolutely amazing. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineups as we're set to go here at Reunion Arena. Kenny Pratt, Sean Bankhead, Kelvin Cato, J.C. Holloway, and Dedrick Willoughby, and Keith Van Horn. You fans are happy as I say that. He is in the starting lineup along with Brandon Jesse, Michael Doliak, Ben Payton, and Andre Miller. Cedric Willoughby, a good one, and Keith Van Horn, a great one. And if you have not seen Keith Van Horn play, you're in for a treat here this afternoon. Dick Paparo, John Cal, and Jody Sylvester. That is a Final Four crew right there. State, the Big Eight tournament champions, uh, and the Utes of Utah, the WAC regular season champions. Van Horn will jump it up. We will watch him closely. Cato controls the tip, and we're underway. J.C. Holloway will handle it about 95% of the time for the Cyclones. Tim Floyd is up early off his bench calling the play. Caton defensively, they go low. Cato a tough time with it, but it comes right to Bankhead. Inside, that's where Pratt does his damage, and he gets two. Iowa State immediately goes into the press just like they did against the University of California. They want to dictate tempo. Van Horn flashes across the middle for the first time. They find him, the jump hook. Cato got a piece of it, but there's Doliak with the follow. I talked to assistant coach Donnie Daniels right before they tipped it off, and he told me that Keith Van Horn is 100%. They're hoping to get between 25 and 30 minutes out of him, Mike. That'll be quite a show if he does it, but as we talked about earlier, fans start. You know from experience that this can happen. There's Pratt. Unable to keep it alive, tipped out of bounds. It'll come back to the youths. First round action from last night. Mike, that's the last time you'll see Tim Floyd in a jacket. He loves the coach without a jacket on. And Rick Majerus never wears a jacket. Of course, the sweater has become his trademark. Doliak in the high post. Cato doesn't come after him. Well, that's big for Utah. Doliak can make that shot, Coach. Well, Rick Majerus told me he was going to bring Doliak up to the top of the circle and force Cato to come out and play him. Rick believes that he can hit a high percentage amount of those shots. Iowa with a great comeback last night to defeat George Washington. Keith Van Horn not guarding Bankhead out on the wing. Rick Majerus likes to leave certain players open in the defense. Caton picks up his first foul. Caton, the best defender on this youth squad, and he has the job of trying to shut down Willoughby. Iowa State likes to run out of a 1-4 offense. That time they ran out of a 2-3 high, high post set. Bankhead on a wing. Keith Van Horn backs off. And right now, Utah is in a triangle in two. They're playing a triangle in two. I don't know if Iowa State has picked it up yet. Willoughby buries the jump shot on the baseline. He loves to go baseline. And he gets his first two to tie the game at four. Andre Miller, number 24, looking for Jesse as he flashes through the post. Doliak trying to get Cato away from the hoop. And there's the first U turnover. Mike, 
on the first two possessions down for Iowa State defensively, they're playing a four-man, man-to-man defense, and Kelvin Cato is playing a one-man zone. He's just roaming the middle, looking for shot-blocking opportunities and defensive help opportunities. Which means Doliak gets a lot of shots, right, if he wants them? No question about it. There'll be shots wide open at the top of the circle. Holloway buries a three. Holloway. Holloway doesn't take many, but he shoots them well. Van Horn is going to get himself to the free throw line. Keith Van Horn, freshman player of the year in the Western Athletic Conference, two-time MVP. A coach in the WAC told me last night, he said, George, he's a cross between Larry Bird and Tom Chambers. <laughs> Let's hope he's half that good. I was just going to say. <laughs> Had a streak of 39 consecutive free throws at one point this season, just missing the school record held by Jeff Jonas. Sorry, Keith, I didn't mean to do that to you. Willoughby unable to shake Caton. There goes Willoughby through inside. Cato, little jump hook. Won't stay. Tip. Doliak's got it. Here comes Miller. Utes looking to run. Usually when he gets the ball, the open court, Mike, he's going to take it all the way to the basket. The scouting reports say when Miller gets the ball in the open court, defense him for the drive. That's bad news for the Cyclones right here as Cato picks up his second personal foul. Andre Miller, two shots. Shot blockers go after it, Coach. Well, Mike, in the last three games, he's blocked 15 shots, but he's also committed 16 personal fouls. <laughs> Miller, a 69% free throw shooter. Rick Majerus has done a great job in his seventh year at Utah. You watch Iowa State play against Cal. They came in as a fourth seed, but against the University of California, they certainly look like a one seed. They look like a better team. There's no question about that. Hit Bankhead outside, gives it to Willoughby. Willoughby comes to the middle this time. Kicks it. Bankhead again now on the other wing. Back to Willoughby coming around. The screen comes up shooting. Rebound tipped and controlled by Dolia. Utah's doing a nice job of limiting Iowa State to one shot at the hoop. Doliak on the offensive glass for two. That's the value of having a big man who's mobile. He ran the floor, got into good offensive position, and found the ball dropping right into his hands for an easy putback. Utes up by one, and Caton just picked up his second personal foul, so... Cato and Caton with two apiece. We're going to time out. The Utes up one. Once the ball is rebounded and the outlet pass is made, the big men must sprint up the floor and look for scoring opportunities and rebounding opportunities. Here, Mike Doliak does exactly that, and a ball drops in his hand, and he's richly rewarded. He has all four of the rebounds that the Utes have garnered here this afternoon so far, two of them off the offensive glass. Pratt putting it on the floor, trying to go on Bankhead. Oh, excuse me, on Jesse. I was, I'm sorry, Utah is still in the triangle in two. I'm not certain, Mike, that Iowa State recognizes it. Count the basket by Willoughby, and Miller picks up a foul. And it's a three. Good job of screening in there by Iowa State. Willoughby gets himself some shooting space, and he gets his feet set, and he goes right up and knocks it in and gets a foul. And they call that foul off the ball on Doliak. All Iowa State out-of-bounds plays are designed 
with the first option going to Willoughby for the shot. Here's Bankhead giving it up to Pratt. Pratt, very good off the dribble, kicks it to Holloway. Cato inside, spinning on Doliak, puts it up and gets it. Anything offensively that Iowa State gets out of Kelvin Cato is icing on the cake. In many ways, Mike, he's an afterthought in the Iowa State offense. That ended up a five-point trip for the Cyclones. They lead by four. Doliak, though, is having a great first six minutes of the game. He's for real. I watched him out in the sports festival out in Denver this, this summer. This young man has talent. Or as my son says, he's got game. Willoughby didn't use the Cato screen. Gets it to Bankhead. Bankhead in traffic. Throws it hard off the glass. Cato the fall off. We want to remind our viewers that there will be some of you leaving us in just a few minutes to see another game of special interest in your local area. You'll be kept up to date on the progress of this game with scoring reports and highlights. Mike, take a look at this. Iowa State's in a box and one. And they got Holloway guarding Keith Van Horn. That's going to be a foul on Brandon Jesse over the back. Holloway is 6-1, guarding 6-9, Keith Van Horn in a box and one. You tell me Tim Floyd is not a risk taker? I look at J.C. Holloway, who looks like he's about 13. Looks like he snuck into this place and he's playing in the game. And Tim Floyd just called that play from the sideline. He's got his jacket off. Screen by Pratt outside. Now Pratt trying to get low and Horn fronting him. Pratt spins in the paint, leans up too hard off the glass. Cato, lucky he didn't pick up a foul over the back. And still another rebound for Doliak, his fifth. Nine out of ten times when Pratt drives to the basket, he will conclude the move with a spin move. There it is, Mike, a box and one. Little Holloway guarding Keith Van Horn. To free Van Horn, Utah's going to have to set some screens for him. Nice play by Andre Miller as he takes it for two off the glass. Mark Rydalch into the game for Utah, and Rick Majerus is going to make a couple of more substitutions next whistle. Pratt, the dish, Cato, two. Sixteen, twelve, Cyclones by four, under thirteen now to play here in the first half. And Horn unable to control the rebound. Willoughby the other way. Doesn't have numbers, takes it anyway. Partially blocked by Miller, picked off by Doliak. Boy, Doliak is really covering a lot of ground here. Early on, it's a war of the big men. Doliak and Cato. I'm not sure what place he is, Mike, but I can hear Rick Majerus <laughs> calling it. We're going to find out. Down to eight on the shot clock. Jesse through the lane. Two. First hoop for Brandon Jesse this afternoon gets the Utes back to within two as we're about to go into 12 minutes. Iowa State exhausted its patience defensively. Utah State will be very patient offensively. One thing that they do in their offense, they keep the ball in the hands of the right players. Long rebound taken down by Miller. Van Horn running on the break. Trying to flash into the middle. Doliak the trailer looking find in Van Horn. He's going to take it. Misses the three. Doliak the offensive rebound. Rydalch doesn't miss his. Rydalch and Canton are two young men who get many an opportunity shot because their men are helped. Their defensive men are helping, and they get a lot of opportunity shots, Mike. 20 seconds time out, and you can see Tim Floyd pointing to the head, saying he didn't think his kids were thinking on some particular point he's making there. The other night with 
Keith Van Horn back in the hotel. Jesse and Doliak stepped up, and Michael Doliak is really stepping up here this afternoon. He's already matched those numbers with eight points and seven rebounds in the first eight minutes this afternoon. There was ever a time when Mike Doliak needs to step up and make a major contribution. It's right now, this afternoon. Hansen and Melmoth now have come off the bench for Rick Majerus. Both coaches playing junk defenses. Iowa State's playing a box and one. Utah's playing a triangle and two. I think we got a foul on Edwards, the freshman, down there on the baseline. Who was it setting the screen? We're going to get a timeout. We'll check it out and be back at 17-16, Utes by one. There's a timeout on the floor. And in Georgia, they have a rule that you have to sit out a period of time before you can play. Mike, he must have transferred from a lot of high schools. <laughs> it's a lot of moving around. He makes one of two at the line. Seven now for Cato. Back to a three-point game. Just about halfway through the first half. And again, the Cyclones come with full-court pressure. Now they back off. Cato, you can see him lurking back there in the lane. Melmoth wide open at the top of the key. Melmoth trying to sneak in a little bit and makes the shot. First two for Ben off the bench. Sophomore from Newcastle, Australia. Went to high school, though, in Salt Lake City. The spacing in Utah's offense make it very difficult for teams to defend them because they create large gaps in, in the defense, and they're patient. What you end up with is a series of five men, five one-on-one -on -one games. Here's Pratt trying to do his thing, has to kick it back to Moderman. Moderman lost the handle going through the lane. Boy, Tim Floyd is really working that sideline. Top of the screen, Van Horn. Three won't go. Holloway there. Holloway with the push gets it on a wing to Willoughby, who's been quiet for a while. I'm not surprised that Van Horn is not meeting with early success with a shot, Mike. You cannot sit out a week of practice and come right into a big game like this and start to perform at peak efficiency. Made a heck of a defensive play right there, though. Yeah. Rick, Rick Majerus told me that the only shooting he did this week, they took him over to a local YMCA, and he shot for about a half an hour, Mike. Michael Doliak certainly picking up the slack. He's back in the game. Pratt trying to dish it to Cato. It comes to Holloway. Willoughby sets himself. Back rims the three. Pratt the offensive board ejected out of the house. Ben Melmoth with the block. does a nice job of blocking out in there. And Bill Melmoth comes from the weak side of the floor to the ball side. He got his arm in between the flight of the ball and the rim, and he was able to block that shot. Brandon Jesse with the aggressive defensive play down on the baseline. It'll still be Cyclone ball. Trailing by five. 9-11 to go in the half. Jacket's gone. We had a clock on that for Tim. I'm surprised he made it this way. Moderman. He can make that shot, Coach Kenny. He's the designated zone buster. You have to make him put the ball on the floor. He's a wonderful standstill three-point shooter. See how much time Rick Majerus keeps his star Van Horn on the bench. Here's Miller. And what do we got? The officials look at each other, and the call is a travel. The scouting report on Andre Miller is play him for the drive. He is not a young man who likes to shoot the jump shot. 20-second timeout. Keith Van Horn will use this 20-second timeout to extend his rest on the bench. Van Horn there with four points. Michael Doliak leading the way for the youth right now with eight. And Kelvin Cato's surprise, surprise, the leading scorer right now for the Iowa State Cyclone. Mike. When you have Melmoth and Doliak in the game at the same time, we should look for Utah to play a high-low offense. Up at the high post will be Melmoth. Down at the low post will be Doliak. 
They'd like to enter the ball to, to Melmoth, and he in turn will look for Doliak down low on the box. Let's keep an eye open for that. All right, Van Horn stay on the bench. A brief one as he comes back in, and we'll watch that later when he is on the bench. Right now he's out there with Jesse Hansen, Miller, and Doliak. It's Holloway, Cato, Willoughby, Waterman, and Pratt for the Cyclones. They've got the ball down two. One reason that Iowa State is having trouble in their offense is that Utah has done a fine job of taking Kenny Pratt out of the offensive movement of Iowa State. Kenny Pratt is having a most difficult time finding catching opportunities. Forget shooting opportunities. He's having a tough time catching the ball. That is the sixth team foul. Hanson picking up his first. Willoughby trying to free himself. Van Horn chasing him. They kick it back to Moderman. Moderman puts it on the floor. Holloway. Got it. Second three for J.C. Holloway, and the Cyclones go back up by one. J.C. Holloway is Iowa State's version of the American Express card. They don't leave <laughs> without bringing him to the gym, Mike, and he's a gold card. Cyclones fans who made the trip down here to Dallas really coming alive. Ten on the shot clock. Box and one again, Mike Holloway on Van Horn. You tell me that Tim Floyd doesn't have a sense of a defensive arrogance putting a 6'1 guy on a 6'9 guy? And what did Holloway do, Mike? He frustrated him. That's right, he drew the foul. Well, JC's a smart kid, too. He knows how to crash. Holloway, he will get himself to the free throw line. One and one, 17 foul. He's from Mount, Mount Ridge, Kansas, Mike. That town's so small, they don't even have a town drunk. They had to borrow one from the neighboring town. <laughs> Cato over the top nearly stole that rebound, but it comes down to Doliak. The Cyclone lead stays at one. Bullet pass inside. Dolia couldn't make the catch. Cato picked it off. It was the right pass to the right man because he was open. Mike Doliak. Unfortunately, he was not able to hold on to the pass. Willoughby with the clock about to go under seven minutes. The pull-up jumper. Seven now for Dedrick Willoughby. The Cyclones. Down six just a little while ago, now up by three. Inside Doliak, spins, good fake, got two. This is a young man, Mike, that was not highly recruited out of high school. Oregon State and Oregon passed on him. He's from Portland, Oregon, they passed on him. And you say young, you're not kidding either, he's 18 years old. Andre Miller's gonna be called with the grab on Willoughby. Rick Majerus's staff does an outstanding job of identifying hidden talent. Clay Edwards back into the game, and Cato will sit down. Cato able to play a bunch of minutes there with those two fouls, Coach, and get away with it. Dedrick Willoughby played every minute of the Big A tournament, which the Cyclones won, and the fans will tell you in about two seconds of conversation. And he had 38 minutes against Cal Willoughby. Look at that, Coach. 174 free throws made. Only two Big A players attempted more free throws than Dedrick made. Well, how about this? Between Kenny Pratt and Willoughby, they have attempted 462 foul shots. That's over half of all state foul shot attempt and that is what Kenny Pratt does well getting the offensive rebound and drawing the foul on Michael Dolia we just talked about how the two of them draw fouls and there they are back-to-back -back foul shot attempts Kenny Pratt plays much bigger than his size he's 6'4 in physical stature but he plays like a 6'8 or 6'9 player 
Three points now for Pratt. Three points, the Cyclone lead, 626. Left to go in the first half. Doliak will now play with two personal fouls. Pratt makes them both. 28-24, Iowa State. Pat O'Brien along with Clark Kellogg in our New York studios. Iowa State on 11-2 run. They're up by four with 626 left. Let's take you out to the East region in Providence and show you what's going on in Arkansas and Marquette. Arkansas now a little run. They trail by only two now, 12-2 Marquette. They started coldly, not knocking down seven of their first eight shots, but since then they've put together a little run. And one thing about, about Arkansas, you know they'll continue to play an up-tempo, racehorse-style game, although Marquette seems to be handling it quite well with Aaron Hutchins. Marquette with the ball now, pulls up for the jumper and sinks it in now. Now they're up by four, or 14 to 10. But Marquette has great defense. They're patient. They'll hang in there with you, won't no they? No question about it. They can play a number of styles. We'll take you there at halftime and show you some bonus coverage of that. Right now, let's go back to Iowa State, Utah, and Mike Gorman and George Raveling. Keith Van Horn, a basket, and then Doliak touched it down there on the baseline. So the Cyclones will keep it. We got a two-point game, 28-26. Iowa State with that comeback after Utah had opened up a five or six point lead. Doliak's going to the bench and Melmoth is going to come back in. Early thoughts here, coach, on Van Horn. I know you've been watching him. What do you think? I think he's a lot sharper than I expected him to be. He's certainly playing with a wealth of confidence out there. In fact, I see a little bit of physical and mental toughness in him. I've been trying to watch his eyes and read his body language. Thus far, this, this has been a game of uh, textbook defense and very patient offense. Moderman trying to set himself for that three. That one doesn't go down. Miller controls the rebound. Both teams might play at maximum efficiency. Right off, sits a three from the corner. You cannot let... Caton and right out wide open. That's his second of the day, and as we're about to go under five minutes, the youths go back up by one. Edwards, the freshman, handling it outside to Holloway. I don't think Utah gets enough credit for its defense. They play what coaches call containment defense. Keep the ball in front of you. Try to stop penetration, which they were unable to do on the penetration move by Kenny Pratt. He's real good at it, though. That's six now for Pratt. And a whistle off the ball. I think they got Van Horn for his second, both of them of the offensive variety. Keep Van Horn in his second first ball. Joliak really doing a great job in the first. Actually, most of those stats came in about the first eight or nine minutes of this one. Keith Van Horn, two of five. Utah 67% shooting, and yet they trail by one, and Pratt's going to be at the free throw. We just saw a shot of Rick Majerus, then. Rick told me yesterday, he said, George, one of the biggest concerns I have is the fact that Keith Van Horn has not practiced for a week. He said, because it makes him susceptible to an injury during the game, and I'm concerned about that. Pratt continues to do his damage at the free throw line. Cyclones by two. Make it three. Eight points for Kenny Pratt. He's halfway to his average. We've got four and a half to go first half. Van Horn stays in the game with the two fouls. Miller is going to take it. That's a rare jump shot by Miller. Willoughby with the push. Now pull it back out. Miller actually missed Keith Van Horn, who came off of a back screen and flared to the wing and was wide open. Here's Pratt trying to take his man. Oh, gross pass. That was going to be a tough one for Clay Edwards to even get a mid on. Well, 
Kenny Pratt leads the Iowa State team in turnovers. Mike, he's got 162 turnovers. He averages 15 points a game, so he's a dangerous player for both teams. Here's Melman. Kicks it. Hanson had the open shot. Decided to reset. Still plenty of time. 17 on the shot clock. It looks like Utah's offense is patient, but they're searching for the right shot, and they found it because the ball was in the hands of the right man, Keith Van Horn. The three ties the game at 32. This one just as we expected, Coach. No question about it. Last one with the ball wins. Edwards, Willoughby, Pratt continues to flash through in the baseline. They might have been over the top too far. He had Pratt hesitated and then made the bad pass. We've got a timeout. 3.06 to go in the first half. We're tied at 32. Mike's solid post defense starts with the defender constantly moving his feet, trying to force the offensive man off the box. Here, Drew Hansen exhibits both of those qualities. A nervous Beverly Floyd as we're tied at 32. We go under three minutes. Not only is Beverly Floyd nervous, Cyclone fans are nervous. The freshman Edwards trying to cover Van Horn. Jesse comes up shooting. Well short, out of bounds. Last touched by Melman. Brandon Jesse struggled a bit in this first half. Well, he really hasn't had an awful lot of touches, and usually when you have a player who's accustomed to scoring a lot of baskets and he goes long periods without touching the ball and getting shooting opportunities, frustration begins to set in and they take ill advised shots. Keith Van Horn on the bench, at least for this defensive stand. Dedrick Willoughby. The leaner goes. Mike, I'm still working for the first time that Willoughby gets the ball on the left side of the floor and doesn't drive to his left and look to score. Jesse kicks it out. Miller. I talked to Willoughby yesterday. He said that's his favorite side of the floor. And he said, Coach, I'd like to put it on the floor and take it to the hole when I'm on the left side. Melmoth. He's going to get himself to the free throw line. Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Pat O'Brien and Clark Kellogg will get you updated on all the tournament news, all the scores, and all the highlights, plus a live look in at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament. That's all coming up on Pennzoil at the half. Right on, she'll bring it back out. We're under two minutes now to play in the first half. Cyclones not yet over the limit. That was just their 15 foul. Right, I'll just hit a couple of threes. Miller, the penetration, the dish. Hansen back rims that one, but the rebound taken down. Jesse Short, loose on the floor. Pratska. Willoughby, again, going baseline. Kicks it this time to Edwards. They reverse it to Holloway. Both teams searching for something that'll get them a reasonable lead as they go into the dressing room. And there's an answer for Iowa State. Joe Martiman, his second three, and the Cyclones balloon their lead to five. It's the largest of the half. With Doliak and Van Horn out, the Utes are looking to go to Brandon Jesse, but Mikey's only one for five. In the paint, he leans in, and the foul is going to be on Clay Edwards. No Clay Edwards is second personal foul. Edwards picking up number two, the sixth team foul. Sean Bankhead. Sean Bankhead is going to check back in, and Marderman goes to the bench. Nine lead changes. Nobody able to open up any appreciable daylight. Hansen sneaks in. Yes, and he'll get to the line.
Drew Hansen was the beneficiary of a nice screen set in there by Ben Mam Melmoth. Clay Edwards picked up his third personal foul, and he's going to have to sit down. Joe Marderman will come right back in. And Edwards was in foul trouble last game against Cal. He sat on a bench for a long period of time with four fouls. Has a crowded part of the bench against Cal. All the guys with four fouls. Cato with four. Pratt played a what he played about eight minutes with four. Right. And Cal was unable to take advantage of that, Mike. Mighty interesting. Has a big three-point play there by Drew Hansen off the inbounds pass. Gets the Utes back to within two, and they will get the ball one more time here in the half. There's little doubt that either Willoughby or Pratt are going to get the shot opportunity in there. Wow, Cyclones got lucky right there. Is <laughs> not sure who was big enough to get that pass from Dedrick Willoughby, but it went off one of the Utes. Well, Sean Bankhead set a back screen for Kenny Pratt, and two players switched to that left Bankhead wide open. Willoughby. Oh. Offensive foul is called on Dedrick Willoughby. Take a look, Coach. Nice foot movement in there by Andre Miller. He anticipated that Willoughby was going to come back to his right, and he was right there waiting for him. The shot clock's off, Mike. Utes looking for the final attempt here. I would look for him to go to Ben Caton. Miller, the hesitation. Yes! And he ties the game at 37. Willoughby. Well, you couldn't ask for much better at the end of the first half with the score. Iowa State 37, Utah 37. Pat O'Brien and Clark Kellogg will be along with Pennzoil at the half after this message and a word from your local station. If it's in, we win the conference. If it's even close, I'm going to McDonald's. Close enough. Great savings are as close as your local McDonald's. Choose from four delicious extra value meals with large fries and an icy Coca-Cola, just $2.99 each. If it's in, I'm coach of the year. Must be that Hilton magic. Have you had your break today? Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. Hi, good everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with Clark Kellogg here on our Pennzoil at the Half. Glad you're with us on a Saturday afternoon. 37 to 37, a 5-4 game, living up to what we talked about. Exactly. Michael Doliak, the story for Utah. He's got 10 points, hasn't missed a shot, and 8 rebounds. And Keith Van Horn, after a slow start, we knew he would be slow with the flu. But since the, the latter part of the sec first half, he was solid. The feeling these two coaches are playing a chess match here. And we'll see who says checkmate at the end of the uh, game. Uh, we're going to take you out to Providence, though. Mark Iowa State and Utah are tied here at halftime, and CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Second round action here in the Midwest region. We're tied at the half in Dallas. Iowa State and Utah 37 apiece. Keith Van Horn, your thoughts on the first half, Coach? Keith Van Horn gave him 17 important minutes of production out there. And no basket he scored in the first half was bigger than that one because that closed them back to a tie, Mike. All right, a quick look at the numbers. You would expect it to be pretty close, tied at 37, and there really is not a whole lot to choose from. Both teams shooting the ball very well. Rebounds even. Let's go to Bob Lobel underneath the Utah basket. Bob. All right, Mike Carmen talked to uh, Tim Floyd as he came out of the locker room. He said, too many cheap Utah baskets. Uh, Doliak killed him in the first half. He says he's going to make those adjustments on Doliak. Also, he's got to get better offensive rebounding. And his guy, Cato, who averages nine rebounds a game, only had one in the first half. So that's where he's got to pick up the pace for uh, Iowa State to come back here in the second half. All right, Cato picked up those two fouls. Van Horn also is playing with two personal fouls. Jesse will be out there to start the second half along with Miller, Caton, Doliak, and, of course, Van Horn. It'll be Pratt, Bankhead, Cato, Holloway and Willoughby 
20 minutes left in the season for one of these two clubs. Loose ball on the floor, picked up by Willoughby. Iowa State, a chance to break the tie. Floyd is just dancing on that sideline, top of your screen. He was trying to get them into the correct 1-4 alignment so that they could bring Willoughby off a double screen, but Utah switched it. Utah is a very sound defensive team. They don't gamble. They just try to contain the ball, keep it inside of them. Holloway couldn't get it up, but there's Cato stripped on the follow by Doliak. And let's see which way the foul is going. It's going to be the third either way, and it looks like it's Doliak. Take a look. Doliak is third personal foul, team foul number one. The loose ball and the foul called by Dick Paparo on Doliak. Fresh 35 for the Cyclones. Now, do you try to pick on Doliak, Coach? No question about it, and I think that Tim Floyd will. Tim Floyd's a crafty coach and a very good coach. Both coaches do an outstanding job of taking advantage of their talent. Cato can't hit the fallaway jump shot, and Jesse up big for the rebound. Rick Majerus, Tim Floyd, both put their teams in positions to win. No one scored here. Is Van Horn the floater? Oh, offensive foul called on Keith Van Horn, his third. Rick Majerus has some has a few difficult decisions to make. No question about it. The Iowa State defender was well positioned, two feet on the ground, and he gave up his body for the glory of the Cyclones. And he was there before Van Horn left the court. So Doliak and Van Horn in the first minute and a half of the second half pick up their third personal foul. Trap spins into the lane, shut off nicely by Van Horn. Bankhead on the other side, no rebound. Ripped away by Pratt underneath, rejected, but a foul, and Van Horn has got number four. What a most unfortunate circumstance for Rick Majerus in Utah. Keith Van Horn picks up his fourth foul. The referee said he put his knee in the back of Kenny Pratt and caused Kenny Pratt to lose his balance. It's a tough call. <laughs> Leave him out there, sit him down. Sit him down, huh? I, I gotta set him down. 18 minutes to go. I'd have to take him out for a little while, particularly in view of the fact that he hasn't practiced in a week. Cyclones, a team that played in foul trouble for most of ah! about 25 minutes of that Cal game the other night. And now it is Keith Van Horn and company's turn. Psychologically, having Keith Van Horn on the bench, I don't think, will be a negative for the Utah players. They, they weren't sure he was going to play this game anyway, Mike. Good point. Good point. Pratt missed both free throws, so we stay deadlocked to 37. We played two minutes and 10 seconds of the second half. Nobody's put the ball in the basket. Kate, it's a first. His first basket of the day puts the Utes up 40 to 37. Bank hit. Bluff the dash to the hoop. Each player on the Utah team does a marvelous job of complimenting the other. Here's Pratt into the lane. Jesse doesn't bite on the fakes. Willoughby trying to create his own shot. The dish to Cato. He got stripped by Miller. Got it back and stuffed it through. Kelvin Cato with the man-sized jam, but he's been awfully quiet today, Mike. Got those two quick fouls early. He's got nine points. He's trying to reestablish a defensive rhythm and an offensive presence. 
That's a great observation, Coach, because he really is out of rhythm defensively, isn't he? Yeah, no quite. Well, he's got to be a lot more selective now in which shots he tries to block. He said earlier he's, he's uh, blocked 15 shots in three games, but he's committed 16 personal fouls. That was a deep three from Brandon Jesse. Psychologically, Brandon Jesse needed that shot. He struggled in the first half, one for five. So Van Horn goes down with his fourth personal foul, and the Utes rise up. Cato. Oh, you Matt let him Ritter. have those all day long, Mike. Mm -hmm. Here's Miller. Miller can't get by Willoughby on the crossover move. One thing you don't want as a coach, you don't want a big man who thinks he can shoot. 15.56 to go. Miller in the lane for two. And the Utes have responded to Keith Van Horn, their star, going to the bench with four personal fouls to open up their largest lead of the game. They're up 45-39. And Keith Van Horn welcomes his teammates to the sideline. Their largest lead of the game with Keith Van Horn on the bench. Jesse and Miller step up immediately, Coach. But well, what you notice here is Brandon Jesse goes through his legs on the dribble. That freezes the defender and gives him enough time to get his legs under him and shoot the jumper. Nice ball fake by Andre Mill Miller and a spin move to the basket for the easy shot. J.C. Holloway handling it outside. Bankhead presented himself down low. They go to him. Bankhead kicks it back. Holloway goes baseline, has it picked off. Jim Floyd, his head and his hands on the Iowa State sideline, drop this 8-2 run. It's really hard to drive on Utah because they do such a wonderful job of helping out. Jesse trying to keep it alive. Loose ball taken off the floor, though, by Pratt. Is he able to get it? And he has to call a timeout. And, and Tim Floyd's asking for a 20-second timeout, Mike. 20-second yeah. timeout. Pratt just couldn't get the handle on that one. Coaches love players who exhibit a willingness to dive on the floor for the loose ball. Hands are reaching. Bodies are diving. That's assertive defensive basketball. Great crowd here this afternoon at the Reunion Arena in Dallas. I'll look at the East UMass. We got a scare from Stanford this afternoon, but they have advanced. Marquette and Arkansas are involved in a good one in the second game. North Carolina, Texas Tech will go at it tomorrow, and then Georgetown will take on New Mexico. Mike, the word I received yesterday is that after the season's over, the athletic director, Gene Smith, at Iowa State is going to offer Tim Floyd a 10-year contract to secure his services for a long, long time. And I believe Tim's going to take it. That'll shut down a couple of rooms in the rumor mill, won't it? Well, how about the one about Tim going to the Chicago Bulls? I talked to Tim about that yesterday. He told me, he said, George, the Bulls are going to do everything they can to re-sign Phil Jackson. So forget anything about me coaching the Bulls. He said, I'm having a hard enough time coaching the Cyclones. Well, there's a big bucket right there for the Cyclones as Dedrick Willoughby hits a three. Gets it back to a one-possession game. That's going to be a foul on J.C. Holloway. Just the first on Holloway. J.C. Holloway, his first personal foul. 14.39 to play here in the second half. Tim Floyd's Cyclones are down three. Keith Van Horn stays over there on Rick Majerus' bench. Melmoth. Played some strong minutes in the first half. Jesse. There's Melmoth again. The hook won't go. The tap does, though, from Doliak. Mike Doliak is a very active big man. He anticipates the flight of the shot as well as I've seen anyone in this tournament. And he has points. nice soft hands, Mike. Utah, look at that. Above 60 the entire game. Trying to get something going in the lane. The dish. 
John Cato. That's the type of shot that Tim Floyd prefers for Cato to take. Not that long jump shot at the top of the circle. The dunk is a high percentage <laughs> yeah. shot. You see where I'd like that one. You know, you look at how patient Utah is in their offense. It reminds me when I was in eighth grade, a nun used to say, patience is the virtue of a saint. John Cal with the call underneath. Rick Majerus looking to get it reversed, and he won't. Here's Cato on the baseline. That's a big finish, all right. Utah fans didn't like the call. Keith Van Horn tries to keep the liquids going over there on the huge bench. You know, Rick Majerus is awfully calm on that sideline. Maybe it's because of that bypass operation he had. Oh, Willoughby! Rick used to be a little bit of a wild man on the sideline, but he has really settled down. Cyclones back to within one as we go under 13 minutes. And oh, Jesse came up short. It's like he couldn't make up his mind whether to dunk or lay it in. Willoughby. Rebound to Melmoth. Comes out of the pack himself. I think Brandon Jesse was a little concerned about committing an offensive foul as he went to the basket. Comes up oh, firing oh. this time. Doliak, an offensive board. Pratt will be called for the reach-in. Mike Doliak has that unusual ability to sense where the ball will come off the basket when it's shot. Joe Marderman checks back in. Mike Doliak, he has 12 points and 10 rebounds. This is his seventh double-double of the season. Right out, out there with Doliak, Hanson, Jesse, and Miller for the Utes. It's Willoughby Pratt, Bankhead, Marderman, and Holloway for the Cyclone. Every and offensive possession for Utah is a search for the best shot. The Miller baseline. Got it. Take that one all day, won't you? He, Andre Miller has very powerful moves to the basket, and he really utilizes his body well to protect the basketball as he goes to the basket. He's difficult to guard. That's going to be a hand check called on Andre Miller. It'll be his second personal foul. And we're going to get a timeout. 11.51 to go in the game. His second personal foul. The lead is three. It belongs to Utah. Melvin in the game for Utah. There's a timeout. Not a whole lot to choose from with 11.51 left to play here in Dallas. And this building is alive with this one. The Kentucky Wildcats and Hokies of Virginia Tech to follow. But right now, Cyclones and Utes are the order of the day. Ten lead changes. Nobody able to open up any daylight. Utah, remarkably enough, getting that six-point lead right after Keith Van Horn went to the bench with his fourth personal foul. You look around this arena, and everybody is seated on the edge of their seat. It's just that type of basketball game. And he Pratt, no rebound. Marderman battling underneath. Has it taken away down there by Hanson. That was a tough little play by Hanson. And Jody Sylvester with the call on Mark Rydalch, who took Kenny Pratt down, set the screen. And that's the fifth team foul on the Utes. I got a kick out of Kenny Pratt when he heard the rumor about maybe Tim Floyd was going to leave. He said he ain't going anywhere. He said all 13 of us are going to strap him down. Pratt trying to make a move on Jesse. Kicks it out. Holloway. Knocks down a three and we're tied at 49. And Tim Floyd was trying to get the foul on that play to make it a four-point play. Cyclone fans come alive again. Miller. Oh, oh. Tatum the block in the ball. 
a good shot block selection by Cato. Then he waited until the ball had left Andre Miller's hand before he attempted to block it. Cato kicks it back out. Holloway. Finally get it to Willoughby with 15 on the shot clock. Willoughby for the lead. Here comes Miller. And Miller likes to go coast to coast in situations like this. Cyclones did a good job getting back on defense. There wasn't much room, if any, for Andre Miller to get to the lead. Well, and Rick Majerus put the red light up. Miller outside. Can't get the three to stay. And it's Cato showing what kind of a rebounder he is. Mike, I looked across the, the way where Miller's mother is seated, and, she, and after he missed that one, she put both hands over her eyes. Rick Majerus has got Keith Van Horn back up at the scorer's table with 9.50 to go in the game. Van Horn with four personal fouls, Doliak with three. And both, both coming come back in. in. Yep. Holloway misses a three, Andre Miller the rebound. Somewhere along the line, we'll get a shot of Andre Miller's mother. She works hard. <laughs> oh, now watch. She's going to watch her son shoot this shot. She's telling him, put it up, honey. Put that shot up. Oh, Lord, why did I tell you that? <laughs> Very calm right now. Yeah. 49 apiece, 9.34 to go here in the game. Van Horn sat out eight minutes and 28 seconds. And it was a tie game when he went out, and it's a tie game when he comes back in, Coach. Well, you like to see pitchers like that, Mike. Moms and dads supporting their children. The numbers on Keith Van Horn, probably the biggest one, the last one, four personal fouls. And also the fact that he's got 19 minutes into a game that 24 hours ago, Rick Majerus would have bet you money he, he would have never played one minute. All right, right on. It's going to be at the point. Hansen. Van Horn trying to post underneath. Doliak and Caton make up the lineup for the use. Is Caton top of the key? Van Horn touching it. Utah keeps Iowa State on defense so long that I believe it's really affected Iowa State's offensive rhythm. They're utilizing so much energy on defense that when they get down on offense, there's a tendency for them to want to rest, and they don't have that fluid motion in their offense, Mike. Cato and Doliak now will square up against each other with three personal fouls apiece. Michael Doliak, the 18-year-old, rising to the occasion today. Rick Majerus called Kelvin Cato a poor man's Dikembe Mutombo. Of course, he's the starting center for the Denver Nuggets. Played for John Thompson at Georgetown. Hey, how about those Warriors, huh? How about that? They came out of the blocks quickly yesterday. Ooh, a lot of people have them ticketed for the Final Four. As a home game for Allen Iverson. I, I bet you he had some big-time ticket requests. I bet he did. Cato throws it away, trying to find Willoughby. Mike, in a situation like that, I, I would say to Cato, son, that's why God made little men. Right out and Doliak exchange outside. Van Horn calling for it down low. Now Van Horn comes through. They go to Doliak instead. He leans in. No. Tip Van Horn. Two. Van Horn. Very intelligent basketball by Utah. They immediately went to Doliak to try to draw the fourth foul on Kelvin Cato. They're gonna work, they're gonna milk that. They're gonna try to get Cato out and get him on the bench. They'll use Van Horn and Doliak to try to draw the foul. Willoughby trying to create a little room camp. Well, they're not going to guard Cato out there. Pratt gets doubled by Van Horn, kicks it to Willoughby. He comes up shooting, makes it. Dedrick Willoughby. 17 for Dedrick Willoughby. Two-point game. We're about to crack eight minutes to go. Van Horn stripped by Pratt. Picked off, though, by Caton. Doliak. 
Kelvin Cato said, you didn't guard me down the other end. I'm not going to guard you. There's a but, difference there, though. <laughs> but Mike Doliak can shoot the basketball from the perimeter. <laughs> Iowa State's trying to bring Willoughby off the double screen. Nice reads by the Utah defense. Uh-oh, you there cannot let it go. Oh, Doliak got there for the block. It'll still be oh, Iowa State ball. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Miller and Jesse are going to check in, but we're going to get a timeout. Utes by four. Mike, when a defensive player gets beat off the dribble, the, the other remaining defenders must rotate to the ball. In this particular case, Utah got two things. They took a charge and they got a block shot. They gave the referee his choice as to which one he wants to call. Doliak coming up with the block. Six on the shot clock. Willoughby knows that they jump out on him. Moderman. Oh, that's big. That is big. You cannot give help defense and step off of Moderman. You must stay out on Joe Moderman's got outstanding three-point shooting range. In fact, it's his only offensive weapon. He let that go with two on the shot clock. Jesse. Doliak. Doliak and Kelvin Cato are having a contest to see who can dunk on who the most. Willoughby. There he goes. Baseline. Won't stay down for him. Van Horn got the rebound. Utes by three in the ball. One thing I really like about Van Horn is that he is not forcing his offense. He's letting the offense come to him. Cato the block, Miller the loose ball. I got the foul. He's hurt. He is hurt. His head ricocheted off of that floor. This young man is hurt. That foul's on Keith Van Horn. <laughs> Michael Doliak waving as Andrea Miller looks on. His head ricocheted off that floor. You could hear it, Coach, yes. I would not at all be surprised if this young man does not have a concussion. Obviously, Rick Majerus is far more concerned about the physical condition of Andre Miller than he is the fifth foul by Keith Van Horn. Moms, I know how you feel. I could feel the pain all the way over here at the announcing table. I was in high school once, Mike, and, 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 and I flipped over a guy's back like that. My mom came down out of the stands. I think I was more embarrassed about it coming down out of the stands than I was being hurt. Looks like she might be saying a little silent prayer there. Another look here, and Ooh. the bounce. Andre Miller now is sitting up, though. That's the applause that you hear in the background. It doesn't get any less painful each time you see him hit that floor. And now Andre Miller walking to the sidelines, and that's a that's collective good, sigh of relief you hear in the Union Arena and can see right there from Andrea Miller. Uh, Apparently her son is okay, but... Coming back to the basketball aspect of this, that was the fifth personal foul on Keith Van Horn. He is gone with 6.05 to go in the game. And you see the pat there from Rick Majerus, Andre Miller, with a little bit of a smile and probably a whale of a headache later on, but hopefully okay. Nice, the nice display of sportsmanship by the Iowa State fans. They clapped as Miller got up and walked off the floor. Report from Bob Lobel, they say he's okay. Cato misses the dunk. Pratt, the rebound, and he travels. Now, when Van Horn went to the bench with four personal fouls, the Utes responded and opened up their biggest lead of the game. Andre Miller returns. And 
Now they are up three. Van Horn is out. You see Andre Miller is going to come back into the game. So despite that noise we heard and the bounce you could obviously see out of his head. Maybe he was more winded having the wind knocked out of him than necessary the whack necessarily the whack on the back of his head. Talk to any coach in the Western Athletic Conference and they'll tell you that Utah does as fine a job as any team in the country at supporting the basketball on a drive. Kenny Pratt got that ball down the post, had nowhere to go, he had three men on him. There's Jesse, he hit a big three the last time. Doliak to Melmoth, wide open 10 footer. No tip. Big time tip. All fingertips in anticipation. Seven points for Brandon Jesse. Five to Utah lead. Holloway. He's out there with Pratt, Marderman, Willoughby, and Cato. Willoughby, two off the glass. Anytime the Cyclones get in trouble offensively, they put the ball in the hands of Willoughby because they know that he can deliver. We've got a timeout. Utah. The Utes up three, 433 left to play here. First of two from the Midwest region here at Reunion Arena in Dallas. Keith Van Horn out of the game. Modderman, Willoughby, Pratt, Edwards, and Holloway on the floor right now for Iowa State. Andre Miller is back in with Jesse Doliak. Keaton and Rydell. And Rick Majerus has gone with this small lineup now. Basically what he has right on his right now, four guards. Michael Doliak with a new career high, 20 points, and he'll go to the line. Utah spread the Iowa State defense, brought everybody on the perimeter outside the three-point arc, reversed the ball around to Doliak's side, the defender fronted him, they threw over top, an easy basket. The Utes have equaled their biggest lead of the game. It is six with 4.18 to play. Utah playing without their star, Keith Van Horn. He fouled out a few minutes ago. But other Utes are stepping up. Willoughby, the dish, Cato, no, but he'll get to the free throw line. And on Doliak, that will be his fourth personal foul. Michael Doliak, his fourth personal foul. This is a game that has just had a ton of lead changes. Ten to be exact. Five ties. Michael Doliak having the game of his life. And Kelvin Cato now trying to cut into that six-point Utah lead. I wouldn't be surprised to see Rick Majerus switch to a zone right now to try to protect Mike Doliak defensively. He could buy a little time, maybe waste a minute or so in his zone. It well might be a good a, a, a good defensive look to give him. Or go to a box and one. Put the, the one defender on, on Willoughby. Cato missing on both the free throws. Pratt comes up with it, though. Can't bank it home. Pratt again. Got it that time. First field goal of the second half for Kenny Pratt. As Beverly Floyd nervously watches in the stand, 62-58. You almost get the feeling here, Mike, that the, the last team to possess the ball on offense is going to win. Jesse, the dish baseline, Doliak. Will he shoot over Pratt? Pratt stole it from him. Pratt. Willoughby. Now they correct the shot and say it is just a two. 21 for Willoughby, a timeout in a two-point game. There's no place.
Oh, no. Every offense needs a player who's willing to take the critical shots and, more importantly, make the critical shots. And for Iowa State, it's Dedrick Willoughby. He's their go-to guy, and, baby, can he make them in the clutch. Bingo! You can see that right toe was right on the line. Good call by the officials. It's a two-point game. It's 62-60. Pressure on Rydell. Willoughby's 9 for 17, 21 points with three assists. Whoa, tight rope back there by Andre Miller, but he's able to keep it in bounds. We're about to go under three minutes on this possession. UMass winning earlier today. We got a foul. It's on Jesse. Illegal screen. You must keep your arms in close to your body when you set those screens. It is the eighth foul on Utah. We'll be shooting. No question about that. Stevie Wonder could have picked that one out. It'll be J.C. Holloway at the free throw line. Iowa State 0 for 5 at the line this half. Traveling violation. If you enjoy well-played basketball, then you certainly have been in for a treat watching this game. Rick Majerus just one timeout left. Jody Sylvester with the call in the backcourt, the foul on Willoughby. Cedric Willoughby is second first foul. Two foul number five. That's two on Willoughby. My suspicion is that Utah will look to go, if they look to go inside, they're going to go to Doliak, or they'll try to post Brandon Jesse up on a low post. Right out, coming around the screen. Oh, he it. it. So much for that. <laughs> a huge jump shot from the senior, Mark Rydals. Will it be now? They clear a side. Utah guards are doing a nice job of switching out front. Rod out is trying to deny the ball to Willoughby. Knocked away from Pratt. The freshman Edwards wants to give it up. Stolen away by Miller. One fifty-five to go in the game, and the Utes will take their time up four. Rick Majerus has got to be awfully pleased with the defensive performance of his team here today. Caton gives it back to Miller. A two-man game now, Doliak and Miller. Miller would prefer to drive. Miller. But he had to take that when the clock was dropping. Holloway. Iowa State won't use a timeout. Willoughby, the little move into the lane. Willoughby, the pull-up. Oh, he's a big-time player, isn't he? And now a timeout is called by Iowa State. 1.13 to go. 64-62. to play here in Dallas. Utah by two. Big time shot. Cedric Willoughby. Well, you hear so much, Mike, about a go-to guy. A go-to guy is a player whose hands your coach wants the ball in and he can deliver. For Iowa State, the go-to guy is Dedrick Willoughby, and he delivers. He's like Federal Express. He gets there on time. Tim Floyd, a chance during that timeout to set the defense he wants. Miller able to get through. Be mindful, Mike, that Iowa State has had a lot of success this season winning close games. Here's Rydoff, covered by Holloway. 
Right off screen from Doliak. He's going to take it. Marked by Cato. He got it back. New shot. Oh! Miller ends the three. I cannot believe he took that Three shot. points. I cannot believe he took that shot. Rick Majerus was about to faint. It's a good thing it went in. Because they had a new shot clock on that one, Mike. Holloway can't answer. Edwards the Play final. Edwards. Timeout, Iowa State. Timeout, Iowa State. 28.8 on the clock. Utes by three. Utah with the three-point lead and the ball. 28.8 seconds to go. What's the strategy here if you're Iowa State? And at Iowa State, huddle are talking about who do we want to foul? When do we want to foul them? How many timeouts do we have left? And who do we want to shoot the basketball? The quick foul is given immediately on Andre Miller, a 69% free throw shooter on the season. Now, that was the foul they had to waste. And so the Utes will inbound one more time, 27.3 on the clock. And I don't think that changes much, Coach. They just got to do it again, right? Right. They have to do it again. Utah does a nice job of, of spreading the floor to, to take away potential double teams. And it will be Andre Miller with Holloway quickly giving the foul now the key here obviously for Miller as he goes to the line he's one of two at the line today he makes one he makes it a two possession game Kelvin Cato comes back in Sean Bankhead sits down and Andre Miller is a 69.4 percent foul shooter <laughs> Andre Miller saying son how do you get in these spots This, good. this is the one here, Mike. 26.4. It's a two-possession game as we speak at 68-64. Big time. Big what time. I like about Andre Miller's foul sh shot attempts was he had a routine. He relaxed himself, and he stayed with the routine. Five-point game. Holloway looking for a shot. Can't get it to Willoughby. Now he does. Willoughby comes up shooting. No rebound. Taken down by Hanson. He gets fouled by Marderman. And it's looking like the Utes might be leaving Dallas winners. Keith Van Horn on the free throws. By Andre Miller. <laughs> oh, baby. Just give me a few days to get well, and it looks like he will have those few days. The highs, the, the lows, the emotional treadmill mill of basketball. Ben Caden, an 85% free throw shooter, getting his first attempt of the day. And looking every bit like an 85% free throw shooter. <laughs> Yesterday, Rick Majerus and I sat in a room talking for a while and he said to me George I just want to get one more win just one more win largest lead of the game here comes Dedrick Willoughby gets it to Pratt Pratt's going to take it can't bank it home rebound Doliak and Doliak gets grabbed and with 5.7 to go they're celebrating in the state of Utah that young man has done a masterful coaching job. He certainly doesn't have anything to be ashamed of. Tim Floyd. He'll get a lot of votes for National College Basketball Coach of the Year. He brought in nine new players and did a masterful job of weaving them into a cohesive unit. As I said earlier, Iowa State plans on rewarding him with a 10-year contract. And Michael Doliak, the game of his young life at the free throw line. Rolls them both in, a career high, 22 points, 73-64. Willoughby 
Ducks down a final three. Willoughby picks it off, throws it up from half court. But the Iowa State season comes to a close, and Keith Van Horn and a very happy Andrea Miller. Three sixty-seven. Our final, the genuine Chevrolet players of the game. First, we'll take a quick look at our brackets. Utah awaits the winner of Kentucky and Virginia Tech. Now, the genuine Chevrolet, the genuine Chevrolet. He tried to say players of the game: Dedrick Willoughby from Iowa State, Michael Doliak from Utah. So for George Ravling and. Bob Bell, I'm Mike Gorman saying once again the final score Utah coming up with a 73-67 win. Let's go back to New York City and power. Pat.